Hello guys, good evening. Let's go ahead and share the screen with you. And I'm going to share the class as well, but also the manual. How are you doing today, guys? Oh, Claudia, look at your avatar. I love it. Yeah, same. So cute. And where do you find that, that feature? Wow, it's, I like it. Uh, um, Zoom, the uh -huh. option and show avatar. Oh, really? Wow, and that's camera. so cool. <laughs> Excellent. So, yeah, because actually you can interact, right, with the, with the avatar. I like it. Very good. So that's new to me. Uh, but I instantly knew that it was an option for Zoom. But I am not the person, you know, who uh, kind of, um, I don't have that curiosity, you know, with, with these particular tools. But... Just give me a moment, guys. I'm going to close some things here and open others. <laughs> I think it's this one. I have your manual. Guys, by the way, uh, I'm sorry that some parts of the manual are blurry, right? And um, I couldn't find, you know, um, a different version of that, unfortunately, right? Uh, I don't know the name of the book, so I haven't been able to find a, a material, you know, that it's not that blurry. Give me one moment. How are you doing with the platform, guys? Because I already have one request. I think it's here. Let me see. Uh, it's exercise. Midterm. Okay. It is at the first part of midterm part C. Okay, we're going to check that. Uh, I don't know what's the name <laughs> of the student because it says Rafiki or something like that. So, it's me. who said, oh, okay, Rafael Anton, it's you. Okay, perfect. So, I'm sorry that I didn't reply, but it's been a hectic uh, afternoon. So, I've been doing so many things, but I wrote it down. I know that it's midterm part C, the one that we're going to check today. Okay, give me a moment. Um, okay, so yesterday we were able like to complete the main ideas, right, from um, section number one. What I'm trying to do today is that I'm going to have an overview, okay, of uh, section number two. Uh, I'm going to try to go over like the main things because uh, um, as you know, there are some extra features, some extra things in the manual, but you have to remember this. Hay que recordar eso que en el manual, Hay ejercicios, pero esos ejercicios son los que ustedes van a encontrar en la plataforma. Entonces, that's the reason why I don't complete them, because I, I would take away, you know, that opportunity from you to go ahead and do the exercise, right, in the platform. So, but that's the reason why I ask whenever we meet that if you have any question, you can go ahead and let me know so we can resolve that particular exercise. So, guys, this is our session four, right? We're finishing our first week. Time is, you know, flying, right? And we are already in March, March 2nd, and we have three more weeks to go. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at section number two, okay? In the platform, right, as uh, so you know, um, there are some chunks for the syllabus, some chunks that it presents to you, right? And actually, there is a topic that I think it's very interesting, right? And that is past models and phrasal models of obligation, right? So sometimes it's kind of, you know, um, complicated to, uh, due to the fact that um, models are used for different situations. But this particular usage that we have for models, right, it's it's kind of interesting. So we're going to talk about models for obligation. Now, before I move to that part, I'm going to pass the attendance, okay? Just give me a second here. I'm going to look for your list. And advanced one. Here we go, advanced one. Okay, and today is the second. Okay, let's see. Uh, Alba Dir Portal Diaz. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present teacher. Thank you. Eh, Amna Francisca Garcia Nieto. 
Eh, Claudia Marcela Linares Surquilla. Present. Thank you. Eh, Diego Antonio, Diego Anthony, I'm sorry, Meléndez Mayen. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you. Eh, Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present, teacher. Thank you, Francisco Antonio Sánchez Jovel. Present. Thank you, Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you, José Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Eh, José Francisco, ahí está, José Francisco Peña Peña. Present. Thank you, José Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you, José Jovito Torres Amaya. Present teacher. Thank you, Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. María Azucena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you. Nate Ibis Mendez Albeño. Present teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Rosa María de Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you. Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you. Jensi Marlene León López. Zulma Beatriz Pérez. Present, teacher. Present. Okay. Uh, Zulma and Jensi said present, right? I see. I see. Thank you. Give me a second. And we have a message here. Rodrigo Daniel says present. Okay, Rodrigo Daniel. Ahí está. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Um, what's this? Okay, very good. Excellent. Thank you so much. Let's begin. Okay, so as I was saying before, we're going to talk a little bit about modules, right? And tell me. Do you know what models are, guys? Do you know what models are? What are models? Examples. What models come to your mind when you when you hear that? Anyone? What are models? Mm -hmm. Anyone? So no information about modules, don't worry, okay? So guys, models are those words, right, that can help us. They become a helper, right, whenever we want to express certain situations, right? So some examples, some examples that, we, some examples, I'm sorry, that we can think of models and one that is very popular, for instance, is can, right? I use can, should, um, I used uh, couldn't. couldn't, very good, may, right? Um, should, I think we already mentioned that. Also, we used uh, would, etc. So might. those might, very good, those are models, okay? So model verbs show different things, okay? So I would say it's, I would say like this, guys. Um, Models express, right, or we use them to express our attitude towards something. Como así, teacher. Well, because sometimes I can use models to express ability. For example, I can, you know, use the computer. I can drive. She can cook, right? Uh, we can collaborate, you know, with the report, etc. So I'm um, expressing ability with can, right? Or sometimes I use it for possibility. I express possibility with, you know, uh, with the model verb. For example, I can say, hmm, she might be interested in this class or hmm, she may come to the party, but I'm not pretty sure. I may um, visit you 
next year or next month, right? Probably the person lives in another country, right? So I'm expressing possibility with may and might, okay? What about necessity, right? For example, there are some uh, modal expressions or modal-like expressions like need. For example, I can say, hmm, do you know what? I need, I need, um, oh no, I have to, I have to buy a new stuff. Una cocina nueva, ¿verdad? I need to buy a new stuff because the one that I have, it's not working well. I need to, right? For example, you need to go to the meeting tomorrow. You need to go to the meeting tomorrow. That would be something like, hey, I'm sorry, but you have to be in the meeting tomorrow because it's important for your department to have a representative in the meeting. Okay, I'll go. So attitudes that I can show with modules are many. And right now what we're going to talk about it's that attitude of obligation, right? So I'm expressing obligation with this particular model. Let's go ahead and take a look at the at the, at the manual, okay, for this one. Um, I think it's this one. No, give me a second, porque de ustedes no tengo acá. Y ya lo tengo ready para abrir. Aquí está. So we are moving to the next lesson, give me a sec. Yes. So we, we are in lesson B, right? I can't explain it, right? There you have a reading first and down below, right? We have modules with multiple uses, right? As you can see there, guys, and I'm going to um, make it bigger, right? Oops, sorry. Okay, we have different modules. For example, we have must. Must, guys, it expresses probably obligation in a, uh, I'm sorry, must expresses a 100% of certainty, right? Uh, we have can't, that expresses possibility in a negative way. We have could, that expresses possibility as well. We have might or might not. We have made or may not. So we have different, you know, sections here. We have two examples. Um, certain in the flashing lights must have caused the seizures. Seizures, do you know what a seizure is, guys? Do you know what it is? Anyone? Do you know they what seizure? You don't know. Okay, don't worry. So actually seizure, it's uh, what we call in the Spanish ataque. That's a seizure, okay? Um, for instance, let's say that a person, you know, is sick and this person has seizures means that there are some times, you know, that uh, this person feel, you know, that is distressed, right? And, and he's having seizures, meaning that um, he's experiencing, you know, the symptoms of a particular um, um, I don't want to say disease, I don't know if that's the right word, but of a particular condition. Okay, son ataques, right? So I'm certain the flashing lights must have caused the seizures, right? There are people that are sensitive, you know, to, to light, right? To sunlight, etc. And, you know, due to head, uh, head, you know, problems or headaches they have, uh, we can unfortunately cause seizures. The seizures might have been caused by stress, right? Some people that whenever they are under, you know, um, stress situations, and unfortunately they cannot control them, they cannot handle them, they can suffer seizures or experienced seizures. Now, take a look at the sentences. When I say must have, what I'm expressing, guys, is that I'm 90% certain about this situation. Let me open here the, the whiteboard. Give me a second. Okay, so this is um, must, right? Must. Vamos a comenzar por acá. Guys, what is certainty? What is certainty? Anyone? What is certainty? Do you know? 
Because we're no. talking about certainty. No, okay, very good. When Pretty I sure? Hmm? Pretty sure? Oh, what is certainty? Certainty, this. Okay, what 100%? is... 100%? Well, kind of. Okay, very good. Now, I used to believe that... Thank you, Jose Francisco. I used to believe that it was 100%, but... Not that long ago, I learned that whenever we are 100% of something, if we are 100%, we do not use that. We use present in this case, right? For example, uh, I can say something like, uh, I'm certain the flashing, lights, the flashing lights are the ones that cause the seizures. So that is 100% right? The seizures were caused by a stress, even if it's in past, right? So uh, if it's present or past, it's not a problem. But if you are sure about it, right, you express it that way. But must expresses a 95% of pos oops, sorry, Dios me. 95% of possibility. Quiere decir, chicos, que yo no estoy del todo segura, pero que la probabilidad es bastante grande. Right? So whenever you use must, we're talking about a 95% of certainty. Certainty. But get certainty. Certainty, guys, es la certeza de que yo sé algo o que yo creo que así es, ¿verdad? O tengo la evidencia para decir de que, para, para, para tener la, how do you say it? La certeza de decir que eso es posible, right? So that is certainty, right? So as you can see here from the examples, right? I'm certain the flashing lights might have caused a seizure, right? So in this case, probably let's let's put it like this. Let's say it's my sister. I know my sister, right? And I've been living with her for many years. And I know that she's very, you know, um, I would say, uh, I don't remember if it's sensible or sensitive. Sensitive or sensible. Sensitive. Sensitive is sensitive. Uh -huh. So uh, she's very sensitive to light, right? Or light flashes. And I know, I know that there is a very high probability that the flashing lights must have caused the seizures in my sister, right? So whenever you are, whenever you're talking about certainty or certeza de que algo es posible, and if it's 95%, you use must. Ahora bien, chicos, please take a look at this. Cuando yo uso must, also I am talking about rules. Porque... Por eso es que cuando hablamos de los de los eh, models, hay que especificar de qué attitude o sobre qué tipo de models estamos hablando o en qué función lo estamos diciendo. Porque whenever you think about must, you think about obligation. ¿No es cierto? ¿Qué les pasa? Cuando ustedes escuchan must, lo que primero que se ve en la cabeza es obligation. You must do your homework. You must bring your passport to the airport if you want to travel to another country. Um, you must um, present your ID at the entrance. Or incluso con must not, you mustn't smoke here. You must not take pictures in the museum. You must not record the movie in, in the movie theater, etc. So you name it. But here, I'm not using must for uh, obligation. I'm talking about possibility, certainty, that something is possible. So then we have the seizures might have caused, might have been caused by stress. Let's say that my sister, okay, she's very sensitive to light and um, lately she's been working and she has a workload that is very heavy. And I know that um, even though she's sensitive to, to, to light, right, due to the stress that she's experiencing right now, those seizures may have come back. So I say the seizures might have been caused by stress. 
When I use might, cuando yo uso might, chicos, I am talking about, sorry, I'm talking about a 50% of probability, ¿ok? Esto incluye might or may, ¿verdad? Cualquiera de los dos. So I'm expressing a 50% of possibility that something is possible, ¿ok? Or certain. So those two are like um, the ones that I can go ahead and put on the, uh, on the top and at the bottom, ¿ok? So questions so far? Preguntas hace el momento. Questions? No questions. Bye. No questions. No, no yet. Por el momento. Bye. Entonces vamos bien. So, this is when we are talking about um, um, certainty, right? And teacher, ¿dónde queda can't and could? Bye. Can't and could, we use it also for a possibility. Okay? And you're totally right. However, when we are talking about can't, it's the opposite of what we want to express, pero siempre con certainty. For example, if I'm using can't, right? Can't, I am talking that something, something is not possible. Okay, something is not possible. Something, it's not possible. Como así, teacher, for example. If I say something like, mm, the seizures can't be caused by stress. And how do you know that? Ah, because research say blah, 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 blah. Porque así dice la investigación y no es posible. Ok. Entonces, cuando yo uso can't, es para expresar siempre certeza, pero de que algo no es posible. So it's the opposite, right? So can't, again, it expresses possibility, but the other way around, okay? And then we have could or couldn't, ¿verdad? Now, could or couldn't, could, right, expresses possibility. For example, hmm, you know what? The seizures could have caused, right, or could have been caused by stress, right? So could can be also used to talk about certainty in the past, junto con couldn't, okay? So could and couldn't, okay? We can use it to talk about a possibility or certainty in the past, okay? So that's why it's important to identify them and like to um, have, you know, um, kind of a classification in our mind that we that we have an idea on how we can use them, okay? Now, that is about certainty. Again, certeza de que algo es posible o no es posible. Ahora bien, let's move on to the next one. Let me see. Que creo que tenía algo por aquí sobre about eh, el porcentaje para que les quede a ustedes también, pero me... Teacher. Dígame. I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, if can't is something that is not possible, just can is something that is possible. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. That's right. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Sí, creo que aquí está. Permítame. Eso se lo voy a compartir en el chat porque no lo puedo poner en pantalla, pero ahorita se los comparto. Ese es más completo, ¿ok? Ese es más completo. Solo le voy a quitar los, los highlights que tiene acá. Bye. Deme un momento. Le voy a compartir algo en el, en el chat. Para que, eso es para usted, para que usted lo tenga, para que usted este, use la tablita de repente cuando tenga alguna pregunta. Vaya. Ups. ¿Qué me hace acá? Ese es el primero. And you are here, guys. Y lo voy a poner en el chat. Yes. Uh, this is for you to have a classification of the models based on the usage, okay? Eso les estoy poniendo acá. 
and ahí, va, ahí le va el primero, ok? So that's whenever we're talking about necessity, ok? Y ya vamos a hablar un poquito acerca de este necessity para que vean que hay como diferentes grados, ¿verdad? Then I'm going to share with you the second one. This is about necessity. Um, I'm going to share with you also certainty. Vamos con lo de certeza. And that will be this one. Por supuesto, esta clasificación está un poco más completa que la que tienen ahorita ustedes ahí en el libro. And se lo voy a pasar acá, permítanme. Esta clasificación que yo le voy a pasar incluye eh, present, past, and future. Por la forma en la que ustedes lo usarían en present, past, and future. Look. Por supuesto, lamentablemente este material como no es de nosotros, no lo podemos compartir aquí en, en pantalla, ¿verdad? Pero lo que, lo que yo quiero lograr con eso, chicos, es take a look at the structure, ¿ok? Take a look at the structure and whenever you have a question about how to use it or what to, or what to use in present or in past, you can use the, 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 that chart as a reference, ¿ok? Now, coming back to the topic here, Right, as you were saying before, can right uh, can be over here probably in between, right? With could, okay, because they are expressing possibility. I would dare to say that that would be also fifty percent. If you see in the classification that I share with you, right, um, that one is about necessity, okay, because we use models to express necessity, right, and and there are different things. And there you have like the ones that you can use for 100% until 0%. If you see in um, in English, whenever we are talking about a uh, necessity, we have plenty. Para necessity, si tenemos incluso más, si usted se fija ahí, hay muchos más opciones de las que incluso no conocemos, ¿verdad? Eh, por ejemplo, ustedes tienen must, tienen have to. Y tienen have got to. Have got to es el equivalente de have to, pero es en British English. Eh, también tienen had better. Had better in Spanish, that would be algo así como más vale que. ¿Verdad? You had better leave early. Hmm, más se vale que o más vale que llegues temprano o que te vayas temprano. ¿Verdad? También está o to. O to es similar or is similar in meaning to should. Tienes que. ¿Verdad? O deberías de. O to. Uh, o to have. Deberías, eh, en este caso, que es en, 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 en advice, uh, you should ought to have left early. Debiste saber haberte ido tem, uh, temprano, ¿verdad? Etc. Y pues ahí tienen más posibilidades. El primer cuadrito que les mandé no, no está relacionado con el tema que estamos viendo, pero en dado caso usted lo necesite, por eso se lo dejo ahí. El segundo cuadro, sí, está relacionado con lo que estamos viendo, right? And that is models to express degrees of certainty, de certeza, right? ¿Cuáles son los que yo uso en present? ¿Cuáles son los que yo uso en past? ¿O cómo lo uso en past? ¿Y cómo lo usaría en futuro? ¿Ok? Now, por supuesto, el libro acá eh, se queda pues solamente con eh, que ustedes entiendan cuáles expresan certainty y cuáles son para obligation, advice, opinion, etc. Eso es todo. ¿Ok? Now, let's take a look at the second category over here. Now, to express obligation, ¿cuál, es, cuál usarían ustedes para obligation de los que tienen acá, chicos? ¿Cuál usarían ustedes para obligation? Most. Okay, muy bien. Exactly, right? So, probably the one that I will use for obligation is must. ¿Algún otro que les llame la atención para obligation? Must, okay. Must and also must not, right? Porque yo puedo decirle a alguien, you must not, right? Take pictures inside the museum. So, it's an obligation, it's a rule, right, that you need to follow. Something that you must not do. Okay. Uh, what about advice? What about advice? Which one will you use for advice? Cool. Should. Sorry? Cool. Okay, good. Good. Uh -huh. Ah, muy bien. Should. Should. 
Muy bien, excelente. I will use should y está muy bien porque por ahí me dijeron también could. ¿Saben para qué usaría could? Could lo usaría más para suggestions. Okay. Shouldn't? Shouldn't? Shouldn't we go here with advice, right? Should, shouldn't. Oops. Shouldn't. Muy bien. I will use it for advice. Good job. And then could, right? I will use it for suggestions. For example, I would say something like, you know what? Um, you could buy flowers for your mother. Oh, mother said, you could buy flowers. So I'm just giving a friendly suggestion. Or for example, I can, I can say something like, let's say for instance that uh, someone sent me a report to me and I emailed, you know, I reply and say, thank you very much for the report. Next time you could include the different uh, products that we have available. So I'm giving a friendly suggestion, right? With could. Now, should it's more suitable for advice because I said something like, hey, um, you should look for a different job. You look very stressed. Um, you are working too much and the, the pay is not that good. So you should look for a different job. Or you know what? You shouldn't um, um, use your cell phone at night because you go to um, social media and you spend like three hours there. So mm, I I wouldn't do that. You shouldn't, you know, use your cell phone at night or you shouldn't check social media at night. Okay, very good. So what about, what about opinion about the past? Opinion about the past. Opinion about the past. Anyone? Good. Exactly, exactly. You can use could, right, or couldn't. Mm -hmm. Very good. So take a look at what you, ha what you have here. The TV network should have been more careful obligation. The networks should think of issuing a health warning, advice. The children shouldn't have been sitting so close to TV. Opinion. Teacher, entonces, ¿puedo usar los models con todos los tenses? Sí. Sí puede. You can use it in present, you can use it in past, you can use it in past perfect, you can use it in perfect tenses, you can use it in future, you can use it in continuous form. Por ejemplo, miren esa oración. Children shouldn't have been sitting so close to the TV. So we have a perfect model in the continuous form, right? Entonces, por eso es que yo les compartí esa tablita, porque a veces... Nosotros pues lo usamos ya sea en, en, estamos acostumbrados a usarlos en presente o en pasado, pero créanme que están en todos los tiempos, right? We, we have them in all the tenses. Also, notice how these models are used in the passive and continuous. Bye. Ese ya sería otro tema porque aquí los estamos incluyendo incluso con pasivo y continuous. De hecho, si ustedes se fijan, el libro parece bien simple. Pero incluye, la verdad es que cada sección gramatical incluye el tema, pero ya a otro, digamos, nivel, porque incluye ya los diferentes tenses. Entonces, it's important that we have a clear idea about the different, you know, structure that we are studying. Now, en el video, que les muestra, ok, eh, la instructora menciona algunos de ellos. Vamos a ver en cuáles se enfoca la instructora, ok. Let's go ahead and take a look. Ah, uh, espérenme, pero no sé si estoy compartiendo sonido. Share sound. Creo que hoy sí. Give me a second. Que no tiene voz. of obligation. Stay and watch the explanation. ¿Escucharon eso? Yes. Bye. Yes. Ok, excelente. So, vamos a ver en lo que se enfoca en la sección. Hi, we're about to study past models and phrasal models of obligation. Stay and watch the explanation. Past models and phrasal models of obligation. Should have, was supposed to, had to, and needed to all describe obligations in the past. 
although they sometimes have different uses. I should have stayed home and studied. It was a good idea, but I didn't do it. I was supposed to be studying this weekend. It was required, but I didn't do it. I had to wear a uniform. We were forced to do this. I didn't have to go with my friends, but I did. There was no obligation. I thought I needed to have more clothes. I thought this was necessary. So, as you can see, the examples are different from the one that we have in the manual, right? And here, there is one that is included that was that is not in our list, and that is supposed to. Now, that, that one, guys, this one, be supposed to. Es este, be supposed to. So, cuando usamos be supposed to, we are going to conjugate the verb be. For example, I was supposed to, I was supposed to send the report to Mary. Okay. Um, she is supposed to, right? She's supposed to be the new manager, but I'm not sure, right? Okay. Um, what else? They were, oops, they were supposed to be uh, picked up by 7 a.m. Okay, so here, as you can see, right, it's kind of, um, this one is passive voice, the other two are active sentences, but this is the way we use supposed to, right? So what we conjugate is the verb be, be supposed to. Mm, what does it express? Be supposed to express expectation. Eso es lo que expresamos. Expectations with be supposed to. Let's take a look at the examples here, right? I should have stayed home and studied. Cuando yo uso should, guys, esto es lo que tiene que venir a mi cabeza. It's a good idea to do this. Okay, so I should have stayed home and studied. It was a good idea but I didn't do it, right? Entonces, esto se, ¿cómo se llama esto, chicos? Si yo digo should have, ¿cómo se llamaría esto? En inglés, should have, should have stayed. Anyone? No worries. Esto se llama... Debía haber estudiado. Se llama perfect model. Oh. Mm -hmm. Se llaman perfect models. ¿Por qué? Porque si ustedes se fijan, tenemos un auxiliary. Hay un auxiliar y hay un pasado, un pas, uh, participle. ¿Ok? Entonces, cuando yo tengo el auxiliary, have, y tengo el past participle, que va antecediendo aquí el, el, el model, entonces tengo algo que se llama un perfect model. ¿Ok? Entonces, es similar al, 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 al present perfect, ¿verdad? Siempre va a ir el model. Para tener un perfect model, es así. Tengo un model plus auxiliary have plus past participle. Ok. Entonces, there is an insect over here. Uh, whenever I want to make a perfect model, I'm going to have it like this. Model, auxiliary, past participle. So take a look at the sentence. I should have stayed home and studied. Si yo uso, si yo uso perfect models, guys, especialmente en este caso, ¿verdad? I should have stayed, I mean, I should have stayed home and studied, pero no fue lo que pasó, right? So actually it was a good idea, idea but I didn't do it. Probably I, what I did is, uh, I don't know, to go and do something else. Probably I went to the mall. I went, you know, to uh, uh, to the movies to watch a movie. You name it, right? So that's, I didn't do it. So whenever you use uh, perfect models, right, we are including, you know, that feeling that it's something that happened in the past and still has a connection with my present, okay? Second example, I was supposed to be studying this weekend. 
So look, I was supposed to be studying. So también acá, si ustedes se fijan, it's in past, right? And also I'm including more elements. I was supposed to. And then you continue with the rest of the sentence, right? I was supposed to be studying this weekend. Or I can say uh, can say something, you know what? I was supposed to send, right? I was supposed to send the report this past um, week and I didn't do it. So my boss is going to be very angry at me because actually he expected that report on the weekend and I didn't send it, right? I was supposed to. I had to wear a uniform. Si ustedes se fijan, son past models. O sea, estamos hablando de past, okay? So I had to wear a uniform. Cuando yo uso have to, guys, I'm talking about obligation. Y ese fue el que no mencionamos en, el otro, en los otros ejemplos que teníamos. Have to, okay, it's obligation. Tengo que, right? So you can use it uh, along with must. Solo que, ¿cuál es la diferencia, teacher, entre have to y must? Que must, ok, es más formal que have to. Esa es la diferencia. Must es más formal que have to y no solo eso. Must también lo utilizo para rules, para reglas. Entonces, por ejemplo, si usted ve un, un cartel o algo, generalmente va a haber un sign, ¿verdad? Que, que dice que es algo, algo está prohibido. Por ejemplo, if you go to a classroom, and you will see the sign that food is not allowed in the classroom. So you must not eat food in the classroom or you are not allowed to eat food in the classroom, right? So that's the difference between must and have to. Que must es formal y generalmente pues lo vamos a utilizar para reglas o para expresar eh, eh, esas reglas de, de una forma eh, para el público en general, right? Y have to no. Have to no es tan formal como must, pero sí expresa obligation, okay? So obligation in the past, had to. Then I didn't have to go with my friends. Bye. ¿Qué pasa con don't have to, okay? Don't have to, si usted lo busca en las listas que yo se lo mandé, ahí lo va a encontrar. Don't have to es el único, el único model-like expression. ¿Cómo se llaman esos? Como no son models, porque los models son los que ya mencionamos como uh, can, uh, can't, could, couldn't, must, made, etc. Estos se llaman model, oops, sorry, model like expressions. ¿Qué quiere decir eso? Que toman ese, ese papel. Pero en realidad siempre son verbos, ¿verdad? Pero toman ese papel de model-like expressions. Entonces, don't have to es, este, perdón, este que estamos hablando de have to expresa dos cosas. Expresa obligation and necessity. ¿Ok? Dejemos eso claro. Expresan obligation and necessity. Pero don't have to es el único que expresa que algo no es necesario. Something is not Necessary. Eso es lo que expresa don't have to. Entonces, cuando yo uso don't have to, I am saying or I'm expressing that something is not necessary. For example, let's say that tomorrow we have a meeting, okay? And we received the invitation, but you say, but I am not in, in, in that department, so why did they send me an invitation for this meeting? I shouldn't be there. And then you call, you know, um, the person in charge or the person who organized the meeting and you ask, hey, you, you know what, I am not in that department, but I received the invitation to go to the meeting. And then the person said, oh, I'm sorry. No, don't worry. You don't have to attend the meeting. You are right. You are not in that department. So you don't have to attend the meeting. When you listen to the expression, you don't have to attend the meeting, what the person is saying Don't worry, it's not necessary for you to attend the meeting, okay? Entonces, cuando yo uso don't have to, I am expressing that something is not necessary. is the opposite of have to, which means that something is necessary. Entonces, mismo escenario. 
you call the person and you said, hey, I received the invitation for this meeting, but I am not in that department. So do you know the reason why I received the invitation? And then the person says, ah, yes, you know, the reason why you received the invitation is because the boss would like you to talk about, um, you know, the report that you sent. And it's important for that department for you to talk about it. Ah, okay, I understand. And the person says at the end, you have to be in the meeting. So meaning it is necessary for you to attend the meeting. Okay, so that's the difference between this. Okay, then the other example is, I thought I needed to have more clothes, right? I thought I needed to have more clothes. Again, need to. Okay, necessity. I'm oh, sorry, necessity. I'm talking about have to, que ya lo mencionamos, and need to. Ok, tenemos estos dos. Le voy a compartir esto en el chat, antes que se me olvide, permítanme. Pero lo voy a hacer por chunks porque chunks son pedacitos, porque no deja a veces este, compartir todo. Pero creo que le voy a compartir desde acá, desde Certainty. No, es más, creo que todo es importante. Creo que al final... It makes sense. Y la última. Ahí está. Vale, ok. Entonces, <clears throat> that, those are like the main points of the... Um, of the explanation that the instructor gave. I'm going to stop here for a moment, guys, porque models es un tema, believe me, it's bien extenso, aunque no lo parece, pero sí lo es. And I'm going to move to the platform, porque hay, un, hay una pregunta de la plataforma, que es el ejercicio del midterm exam. Solo déjenme ver dónde dejé la plataforma. Ok, aquí. Platform, 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 platform. Ay, no, ¿será que la cerré por accidente? No. My goodness. Y tanto que cuesta que cargue. Vaya, espérame. Um, I'm going to access again. But I remember I had it here. Yo recuerdo que sí la tenía. Over here. Si sí, estamos viendo el, el video desde la plataforma, right? Oh, my goodness. Aquí está. It's two. Acá. So, it's letter C, right, eh, eh, Rafael? Yes. Vaya, excellent. Voy a duplicar. A, B, C. Give me a second. Ahí está. Vaya, veamos. Dice, instructions. Read the following sentences. Choose from the following verbs to complete the sentences. Aggravate, cause, deal with. Identify. Aquí está malo esto. Ignore and run into. Right? Okay. So, este es el C, ¿verdad? Quiero ver si lo abrí correctamente. Number sí, three. Words. Number, three. Number three. This one. Okay, very good. It says, Mia's life always runs smoothly. It seems, I guess, I guess, Tamala, I guess, Amy, it seems like she never. What do you think it's the right answer? Runs into. Runs oh, into. Very, yeah, yeah. Runs into. Very good. So it seems like she never encounters unexpected problems or it seems that she never runs into unexpected problem or unexpected problems huh? so what about the rest what about number one guys what do you what do you have in number one Kara ignores mm -hmm. let's see ignores her problems she thinks that other people will do something about it oh Wrong, totally wrong, right? O sea, la, la idea en sí, no la respuesta. Uh, Bowie isn't sure what's wrong with his, with his bike. When he... 
when he, sorry. Identifies. Identifies, okay. The problem, he, he'll fix it. Okay, very good. Number three, you already told me, runs into. Number four, Marco is a great boss. I like the way he... Deals with. Mm -hmm. Deals with, right? Deals with um, problems that come up with. Don't ask him to come with us. She... Causes. Causes, I know her rude to you, es hola. Causes problems wherever she goes. Number six, you should, shouldn't, creo que aquí, aquí hay errores. You shouldn't scratch an insect bite. It only aggravates. Mm -hmm. Aggravates, right? Aggravates the problem. Okay, then we have part two, instructions. Choose the best word that best completes each sentence. I just saw Sarah at the cafe, so I know for a fact or I doubt she's in town. No, for a fact. Exactly. No, for a fact means that it's something that you know, that you are certain about. So you are um, assuring that that's true. Joe's plane landed two hours ago. So I'm certain or not sure why he hasn't gotten home yet. Not sure. Probably not sure. Because if the plane has landed two hours ago, so why is not the person here, right? So if it was two hours ago, that's enough time for the person to get home. So he's not sure. Uh, it sounded noisy when Vera called. So I suspect or I'm positive she's out shopping. What do you think? Suspect. Suspect, right? Because actually uh, she's not there to, you know, to uh, prove that that's true, right? So she suspects. What about number four? Janku said she checked her email. So I assume or doubt she has internet access. Assume. 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 Very good, assume, right? So in this case, it's very similar to Spanish, asumir, right? What about number five? I'll see Emma today since she is in my English class. So I am positive I'll see Emma or I figure I'll see Emma today. I'm positive. I'm positive. Mm -hmm. Very good. I, uh, I'm positive because she's in my class. She's supposed to be there, right? Jerry loves football. I doubt or I have a hunch he'll be at the game today. What do you think? Have a hunch. Have a hunch. Okay, and we're going to look for that. Meaning. Okay, have a hunch. Very good. So let's go ahead and double check that we're going to send our answers, and all of them are correct. Okay. So I think we have completed this section over here. Do you know what is the meaning of have a hunch, guys? Feeling like uh, corazonada in, in Espanol, mm -hmm. presentimiento. That's right, exactly, right? So in English, the definition that I found, it's if you have a hunch about something, you are sure that it is correct or true, even though you do not have any proof, right? So informal, in, as it says there, oops, I had a hunch that Susan and I would work well together. Okay, uh, also, let me see if I can find the meaning here, because sometimes it gives you the uh, the equivalent words uh, in Spanish. And vamos a buscar aquí en lingui. Okay, uh, have a hunch in lingui. Lingui says corazonada, presentimiento, right? Eh, premonición. Okay, good job on that one. So, guys, do you have any other questions related to the platform? Teacher, the section B. From this one? Uh, the section B. Okay, uh, here in the midterm exam, right? Yes. Okay, 
Very the good. Number, part one and uh, number four. Part one, number four. Part one, number four. Okay, let me see if I can over here. Part one, number four. So here uh, I can see that pretty much what we are using are the uh, structures, the grammatical structures that we studied in sections section one and the one that we're studying in section two, right? So over here, it says that loud noise, blah, 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 had been a tree falling, okay? Now here, uh, Rafael, what we need is a model, okay? And we need a model of possibility. Four, right? Oh, I'm yes. sorry, you said section one, right? Section one, number four. Oh, I'm sorry. I was reading the second section. So um, Gina hates blah, blah, blah to the radio because of the commercials, right? So in this case, the verb is listened, right? So what is the type of, um, I would say, verb that we can use here? Is it a gerund or an infinitive or both? Infinity. Muy bien. Actually, you can use both. Se pueden utilizar ambos. Sin embargo, la plataforma solo acepta uno y es este. To listen. A pesar de que la respuesta puede ser to listen or listening. Porque hate, no sé si lo mencionamos ayer, es uno de esos verbos de la lista que yo puedo utilizar con gerund o con infinitive. Creo que en la lista está like, hate, can stand, ¿verdad? In, yeah. in love, in love. Uh -huh. So I can use all of those verbs with a gerund or with an infinitive. De acuerdo. So uh, I don't know, guys, do you have more questions about the platform now that we have uh, a couple of minutes left? Teacher, uh, yep. part two, number three. Part two, number three. It says, I didn't do well on the exam. And then I, blank space, have gone out the night before. Hmm. So here we're talking about the past, right? Because uh, the person is even mentioning the night before. Entonces, aquí que necesitamos? Here, what we need is this. We need a perfect model. ¿Por qué sé que necesito un perfect model? Por la estructura, look, blah, 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 have, and then the past participle. Let's take a look at here. Ha, ah, aquí está, miren. Eh, aquí, I didn't do well on the exam. I, blank space, auxiliary have, and past participle, gone. Entonces, aquí lo que yo necesito es saber cuál es el model, right, que yo necesito. Entonces, si yo digo, I didn't do well on the exam, no debí haber salido la noche anterior. What would be the model that you need here? Should. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I shouldn't. I shouldn't have gone down the night before. No debí haber salido la noche anterior. Pruebe con shouldn't y a ver si le funciona. Quiero ver si lo escribí bien. Should, no, aquí está, es al revés, shouldn't. Bye. Entonces, probemos con shouldn't. Y ahí está, está correcto. I shouldn't have gone out the night before. Acordémonos, miren, si ustedes se fijan, chicos, todos son iguales, todos son perfect models. Aquí ve el 3, 4, 5, también el number 2 y number 1. Entonces, prácticamente lo que necesitamos aquí son models. ¿Verdad? Eso es lo que van a agregar en todo el ejercicio. ¿De acuerdo? Ok, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. You're welcome. Any other question, guys, before we leave? No. Eh, sección no. 2.5, teacher. 2.5. Mm, veamos. Quiero ver. This is the midterm yes. exam. Ah, ese es el que hicimos ayer. Eh, which one? I'm sorry. ¿Con cuál era? Perdón. ¿Jensi? Eh, 
sin eh, de la 2, pero dice 2.5. Ajá, sí, es 2.5, es un knowledge. Eh, la 2, teacher. Sí. Identify. Ah, yes, es. Yes, Ese yes. se la marcaba mal. Ok. Sí, number two is identify. Me, María, I'm sorry, can look at a broken bicycle and find. O sea, quickly she can identify, right, the problem right away. Mm -hmm. Identify. Very good. So, guys, I'm going to stop here because of, uh, of time, but I'm going to pass the attendance and then okay. we're going to continue tomorrow. Ok. Let's see. Um, Alba, I'm sorry, dígame. Dígame, Jensi, perdón. No, nada, teacher. Ah, ok. So, let's see, Alba, dir por tal días. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Here. Thank you. Eh, Ana Francisca García Nieto. Claudia Marcela Linares Surquilla. Present. Thank you. Eh, Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present, teacher. Thank you, Francisco Antonio Sánchez Jovel. Present. Thank you, Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you, José Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present. Thank you, Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Eh, Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present, teacher. Thank you, Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present, teacher. Thank you. Uh, Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Um, let me see. María Susana Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you. Nady Ives Mendez Albeño. Hey, uh, present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you. Uh, Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Rosa María del Milagro Pérez de Paz. Here I am. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you, Jensi Marlene León López. Present teacher. Thank you, Jensi and Sulma Beatriz Perez Caldames. Present. Thank you, guys. Okay, so uh, because of, you know, the time, I'm going to stop here, guys. But thank you so much for joining. Please, 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 if you have questions, write them down or you can send a reminder to the WhatsApp group and I'll be more than glad to go ahead and help you with uh, with the answers here. So thank you for joining. Have a good night and let's meet tomorrow. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Good night, good night guys. Take care. See you tomorrow.